Just imagine what it would be like to just for one day be able to stand on a golf course and hit driver like Rory McIlroy, as long and as straight and as consistent as he does. Well today, you might not be able to hit it like him, but I'm going to help you get a little bit closer. There's one thing that he does in his golf swing, which I know can help so many of you out there perform better with that driver. I want you to pay attention to the position of his shoulders through the golf swing and the position of his left arm and the relationship that they have together. So the first point we're going to stop him at is left arm level with the ground. So around about there. And I want you to look at the angle he's got between that left arm and his shoulder turn. So that, that angle there is greater than 90. He's done most of that work in the back swing with his upper body so what about if we look at that position on the way down, again, that left arm level of the ground? Well, we see a very, very different story. When he gets into that position, we'll call it there, left arm level of the ground, but look at where his shoulders are now. That angle, which was greater than 90, is far less. It's probably closer to 45, if not a little bit less than that. So traditionally, lag has been thought of as the angle between the golf club and the lead four of. And that's certainly a topic of discussion. But what I want you to focus on your goal swing is notice how he uses all of his body turn. So he's creating this angle here, huge amounts of turn. And then in transition, he lags his arms behind his body and we see a very, very different position. Now, why that's important for Rory is because now he's got so much energy stored up in that goal swing. His arms are behind his body which means that as he rotates through, he can accelerate his hands ahead to catch up with his body. So that is something that Rory does to help him hit the ball high, to help him hit the ball far, and to be extremely consistent. So now let's go through a couple of things that you can do in practice to help you swing it like Rory. No guarantees. So the first one, first little exercise, and just take the grip end of the golf club and just pop it into your kind of belly button area, and then just let your arm kind of extend and hold the golf club here and then obviously trail hand goes on. And just from here, just start to make a golf swing, but just learn what that's gonna feel like. You can see, just like Rory does, shoulders are doing most of that work, trail arm is staying very, very extended. And I kind of have to do that. I don't really have a, a choice. So I'm starting to really engage that upper body really early and we start to see this turn happening exactly like we see with Rory. Now there's no reason why from here you can't continue that and sort of just use the wrists and start to make a bit of a backswing, but really that exercise is to highlight just how we should move the golf club away from the golf ball. And that leads us on to the second point. So many of you who don't do what Rory does and kind of get that narrow position on the way back, it can be, and it very often is because there's a lot of focus on the club head. You know, we set up over the driver, your focus goes on the club head. Where does that club head have to go? Well, it has to go up, in and behind you. And what do we do? We kind of snatch that club away. And as I snatch that club away, just look what's happened. Arms are so bent. Well, trail arm is certainly really bent. Shoulders haven't engaged, arms have got very narrow, and already my lead arm is starting to kind of run into my chest. Now from here, if you try to carry on, your left arm is gonna break down, you're gonna get very narrow, and it's almost impossible to sequence the downs incorrectly from there. You can't do what Rory does if that club gets snatched away. So don't think of the club head. That's not gonna help. What Rory does exceptionally well and what you need to do exceptionally well is think the body is gonna start this goal swing. I'm gonna basically start this goal swing by a rotation of my hips, a rotation of my torso, and that, on its own is what's gonna move the golf club. Notice how when I focus on my body, my arms stay very, very extended and I look, I know I do, I look exactly like Rory McIlroy at this point. So don't get obsessed with the club head. That's really not gonna help you. You've gotta think about how the body moves and that little drill is gonna help. This next little exercise is really gonna to start to get you to feel what Rory feels. So you're gonna take your posture and address and you're gonna take your lead arm and you're gonna put it down as if you've got a golf club. You're gonna take your trail hand, you're gonna hook it around the back. Now, this is where it becomes a little tricky. I'm gonna take my lead hand and I'm gonna try and push my lead hand towards my trail hand. I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna turn and turn as I'm doing that. So as I'm turning my shoulders, I'm actually trying to push my lead hand against my trail hand, okay? And then as I transition, I'm gonna use this 
trail hand, and I'm gonna pull my arm into my chest. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm putting some pressure in this direction. I'm keeping that pressure, keeping that pressure, keeping that pressure, keeping that pressure, and then I use my trail hand to pull my arm into my chest. And you can see from that face on camera just how different my lead arm is relative to my chest. My arm needs to run into my chest in transition. It does not need to run into your chest early, as we mentioned a moment ago. So you can see that logo on my top. I'm gonna to keep that logo and keep my arm away from that logo. There's my big turn. And then in transition, I pull it into my chest. Big turn, pull it into my chest. Big turn, pull it into my chest. And what I'm starting to do there is create that lag that we spoke about in Rory's goal sing. But remember, we're not talking about lag here. You know, this is the angle where most people think about lag. They think about keeping the wrist cocked back. The lag I want you to focus on is the lag between your upper body and your lead arm. We need that lead arm to be across the chest in the transition area. But we don't need it, as I say, to be across the chest early because you've just got nowhere to go. So I'm gonna do that little exercise again, but this time I'm gonna do it with a golf club. So I'm gonna make that movement wide, 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 and then in transition, pull it across. Now, what do we do from here? That arm has to get off that chest now. This is where the speed comes from. This is where the energy comes from. This is where the power comes from in Rory's Golsing. Because once his arm gets pulled into his chest in transition, he's going to as fast as he can and as aggressively as he can, he's gonna fling that off his chest. And that is the next little part of the exercise. You're gonna do this here into your chest, turn and fire it off your chest. And you're gonna to start to feel how your arms and the club have got a lot more energy, got a lot more speed, and there's a lot more freedom to, for them to fire. Unfortunately, what happens when we do this wrong and we get this narrow movement early on is those arms start to try and find space in this area here. That's where you start to get the club releasing early. That's when you start to get the power in that golf swing happening far too early. That's when you start to get really cramped through the impact area, you've got nowhere to go. Doing it in the correct way is gonna be so different. And I trust me, if you do that little exercise, you're gonna have feels, ideas, and, and thoughts that you've never had before.